All right, so um, we don't have a lot of time, so if you don't mind, I will go immediately to the agenda. So maybe if we go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, first of all, I believe uh, it's now clear that uh, Ellen and myself uh, uh, call the working group. I don't think we need to introduce ourselves uh, anymore. Uh, so this is the agenda for the day. Mm -hmm. um, we would like to cover uh, the four points that you see there. The first one is uh, uh, we would like to um, give you a very quick overview of the capacity building initiatives that we have planned for the next month with a focus on uh, uh, COVID-19. The idea of this, of this initiative is to ensure that we can better equip child protection practitioner to adapt uh, programming during COVID-19. The presentation will be followed by a, a group discussion. So we would like to hear from you. What do you think we should prioritize in terms of capacity building resources, tools, learning approaches, uh, um, online platform and uh, general activities? Mm -hmm. Again, with a focus on COVID-19. Um, so for point one and point two, we will be in plenary. Then we will move into two different group. One group, uh, um, will discuss the competency framework. The other group will discuss the MOOC. I know that you already heard the presentation of these two different products this morning. So the idea of the breakout room is to discuss more what do you need to be able to, what do you need to, be able to um, apply those products, okay? Uh, for example, for the competency framework, already some great ideas were given in the chat this morning, but I would like to hear more from you, all right? So uh, that's the plan for the day. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to start immediately with agenda item number one, so we can move to the next point. Okay, so um, very quickly, what you see there are the activities that we have uh, planned, uh, the capacity building activities that were planned for the next month to really uh, strengthen capacity of uh, child protection actors uh, uh, to adapt programming in the context of COVID-19. Um, the first activity is the, uh, the only one that we're about to finalize. The next one we still need to start. So we're about to finalize a capacity gap assessment in the context of COVID-19, which will help us uh, to define the main needs and gaps in, with regards to uh, program adaptation. And it will also give ideas in terms of the um, learning methodologies of the uh, capacity building resources and the online platform that we should prioritize. Okay, so this is activity uh, number one. Activity number two, as you know, in the past months, the Alliance has developed uh, um, a lot of technical resources and we would like in the next month to develop training modules in order to ensure that all the technical notes that have been developed by the Alliance can be easily um, um, uh, access, can be easily accessible for uh, child protection practitioner and frontline workers. And also we hope that uh, uh, by having more training modules, our colleagues in the country can also use them to upskill uh, their staff and partners they work with, okay? Third point, as you can see, child protection and COVID-19 online learning series. So as you've heard this morning and yesterday from Elena, we, are, um, we, have, we have launched a MOOC on child protection programming uh, in the context of COVID-19. We know that not all of us might have the opportunity to access a very structured learning opportunity such as a MOOC. Some of us may not also um, be able to count on a very reliable internet access. This is why we thought, okay, maybe we should also offer um, standalone learning opportunities such as, for example, uh, um, webinars, podcasts, videos, now, what will be the content of this webinar, podcast, and videos? We don't know yet. It will be defined based on the outcomes of the capacity gap assessment. And if today you have ideas to share with us in terms of what you would like those, these online learning series to cover, feel free to let us know. Um, moving on. 
So, um, no, 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 sorry, sorry. <laughs> Moving on in the next point, sorry. So, um, I think I've discussed uh, uh, a lot throughout the week. Um, the fact that we have been really pushed throughout COVID-19 to um, shift to uh, remote modalities for service provision. And we also know that not all of us know uh, and know how to use confidently online platforms and apps. This is why we also plan for webinars for uh, um, um, child protection practitioners which will really uh, make sure that we will become a bit more familiar with all these online platform and, and, and apps and all their features, okay? Another activity, we know that uh, the increased use of internet for children um, has exposed them to more online risk. We would like to make sure that all child protection practitioners are familiar with the online risk for children and know how to mitigate them. And lastly, we are also looking for case studies, um, good practices of how organization have uh, um, managed throughout all this time to provide remote capacity building initiatives. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a nice example that you would like to share with us, please feel free to do so in the next month. Right, so this was a very quick overview because we don't have a lot of time. Now we can move on with the slide, thank you. Right, okay, now, um, you will go into breakout room now, and uh, um, we um, would like you to discuss uh, this question, okay? So the question says, do you have any suggestions on capacity building resources on child protection ad adaptation during COVID-19 that we should prioritize? Please uh, provide an idea that you might want to share. I can give you maybe some example. So um, something that, for example, I would like to have is a podcast on how to talk uh, uh, to children by phone. Uh, or, for example, uh, a webinar on how to use WhatsApp for training purposes. So feel free to come up early with those kind of suggestions. I would like to ask uh, um, if you can please identify in uh, every group a volunteer who will then type all your ideas uh, in the Mentimeter. Mm, yes, you will see um, a Mentimeter link, I think, has been in the chat box. Yes. Okay. So um, you will have, uh, yes, something like 10 minutes for this task. Um, therefore, thanks and see you very soon. Hi, and welcome back, uh, everybody else. Uh, so, okay, ah, okay, I think you are all back. Um, all right, so um, we're a bit behind time. Eh? Therefore, uh, we won't have the possibility to maybe go through some of the uh, results together with you, but I just would like to um, reassure you that uh, the answers you have uh, given to us will then feed in this overall uh, capacity gap assessment that I was uh, mentioning before. Maybe now, Elena, over to you. Uh, Elena, I think we will have time to do only just one centimeter before mm. going to the breakout room again. Yeah. Okay, so um, thanks, Anita. Um, just um, in the interest of time, we thought of asking you as well, what kind of uh, um, methodologies do you think are the best like, to deliver capacity building initiatives since COVID-19 started? So you will have a Mentimeter uh, in the chat box already, I suppose, because Katrina yeah. is always so efficient. Um, and the question that it displays is, please rank the most accessible learning approach for child protection, humanitarian action practitioners during COVID-19, where one is the most accessible and five is the least accessible. So it's really about ranking these uh, options that you'll be seeing on the slide. C Katrina, can we show the slide at least so that from Mentimeter? Yeah, it's out. Uh, okay. Uh, just to, so that they see the ranking that they can do. Sure. And we just want to get an idea about that. Um, And I'm it, just going to leave it take a second. <laughs> uh, no, I, I can Elena. see. Yes. Um, so Alex, is this question. Yeah. Okay. It's during COVID-19. Okay. 
Yes, it's for COVID-19 specifically. And um, said that, I think while we let like your answers come through and uh, we will not go into the analysis because we have limited time, I think the next step would be for us like to split in two groups and um, we'll give you, unfortunately given the limited amount of time, we wanted to do two rotations of this, but uh, um, but uh, in reality, we can only do one. So feel free to choose uh, uh, the group of Anita, uh, where you're going to be touching upon the competency framework, or my group, where we're going to talk a bit more about COVID-19. Uh, and then we'll come back to plenary for a wrap up. Um, OK, um, very interesting, these uh, results so far. Uh, I would expect the podcast to be higher. Um, so uh, me too. interesting to see that. Um, okay, so I believe uh, you have all answered. Um, the other suggestion, sorry, Anita, just to, I'm interrupting you, but just because I see that uh, um, some have uh, selected others, if you did, please feel free to share the idea in the chat box uh, if you like. Thanks. Um, Thanks, so Katrina. Yes, yeah, so for the breakout rooms, um, those that wish to discuss with Anita are going to stay here. Um, for those that wish to discuss with Elena, you'll see in the bottom of your screen on the right hand side, um, there's the option of breakout rooms. If you click that, you can hover over room one and click on join breakout room. Um, and if you click on join, it will take you there and that is where Elena is going to wait for you. Um, if you have any trouble, just pop it in the chat and I will, I'll help you get there. Thank you. No problem. I'm just gonna go myself, so it's just gonna take me a second. No problem. Um, I don't see the option anymore. Where is it? Okay, yeah, got it. Perfect. Thank you. Ciao, Elena. Okay, so Katrina, yes. can I assume that uh, people who are here with me now? No want to problem. Discuss yes, there's, there's two people in the chat, uh, Lu uh, Lucia and uh, Loet, um, who I believe want to move. So I'm just going to move them quickly, but you can start talking while I move people over. Okay, perfect. So welcome again. Um, can I just maybe um, see, you can put your thumbs up. How many people this morning listen to my presentation? Uh, um, well, this morning for me, listen to my presentation on the competency framework. Can I see your thumbs up if you did? I gave a presentation on the competency framework. So, okay, da, da, Sara, Lotte. Okay, uh, unfortunately, not many of you. Um, all right, so very quickly, what I can do, I can share my screen and I can share, uh, okay, this is the PowerPoint that I presented for, that I presented a few hours ago. Mm -hmm. All right, so maybe for the ones who were not there, very quickly, we are launching the new Child Protection Humanitarian Action Competency Framework. I explained this morning about the strategy the framework. So as you can see, the framework uh, includes uh, technical competencies, includes core values and core humanitarian competencies. Um, and I would stop there. Mm -hmm. Now, the idea of the session with you today was to discuss a bit how we could uh, support uh, practitioners to apply this framework. And already this morning in the chat, uh, a lot of interesting suggestions were given to me. I can maybe mention two. So, for example, some colleagues were saying, why, Anita, don't you also develop tools uh, on how to assess the competencies? Because now what happens is that we have this framework with all these uh, competencies, but still maybe a practitioner might need a little bit more help uh, on how to assess the competencies. Um, also, um, we might want maybe more guidance uh, on how to monitor the progress over the competencies. Mm -hmm. So the idea now of the group discussion would be to really hear from you, 
uh, what you think are uh, um, additional tools and guidance that uh, we could develop next to the competency framework to really encourage practitioners to use it. And I'm sorry I can't tell you more about the competency framework, but I don't want to repeat myself for colleagues who have already seen the presentation this morning. Um, I can maybe share something or... Um, yes, go ahead. Lotte. Well, sure. I mean, I happen to have used this uh, very first version in 2010 um, when I myself was trained uh, as a child protection practitioner in Save the Children. Um, and then we were basically, this was an exercise that was done between the, the trainee and the, the manager where you would literally go through the whole framework to really select, uh, set goals for yourself. So really um, go through the list of competencies and really set goals and select what you wanted to, to strengthen. Uh, and then also have sort of biannual um, uh, yeah, moments together, like coaching. Uh, it was really about coaching and reflection on uh, where you are in your um, achieving your goals. It's just one way to, to use this framework, but I really, uh, later when I was also managing um, staff, I thought that that sort of approach of sitting together, looking at the goals, having that reflection and coaching session has been very, uh, yeah, very useful for me, uh, but also for others, I believe, and would be interesting to see if there could be some guidance around how to uh, do that, you know, how to have those sessions and uh, maybe some examples of, um, how it can be used in people's uh, sort of performance review. Mm -hmm. That's a great example. Thanks, Lotte. That's noted. Um, yeah. Anybody else with ideas? <clears throat> so we talk about maybe some guidance note on how to conduct uh, a like coaching session to be able to set uh, learning goals based on the framework. What are other ideas? Hi, Anita. This is Hi. Marie. Hi, Marie. Uh, so I haven't seen the latest, latest uh, yes. version of the, um, <laughs> of the framework, but I, I, I remember a few years, <laughs> months ago, we were dis uh, discussing about having like sort of a um, toolbox aside with very practical um, for instance, uh, terms of reference for uh, the, the main job position that we, we use most of the time, like mm. special advisor, uh, project manager, uh, probably case manager. Um, I mean, the, yeah, the 10 maybe most useful and recurrent job position. So at least people have this, the minimum set of competency that should be included from the recruitment yeah. process from the, the start mm -hmm. up to um, monitoring uh, the, the staff performance uh, to the end of the process. I'm not mm -hmm. sure this has been done. Maybe it has. Uh, no, not yet. Uh, we have put all mm -hmm. the emphasis uh, to finalize the competency framework, Marion. So the toolbox okay. uh, is the next step. But thanks. That's a great idea. Noted. Um, okay. I think we still have uh, some time for maybe a couple of more ideas uh, in case somebody else wants to go forward. I would and, like... And sorry, maybe... Oh, sorry. No, go, 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 go Marion. Go. Go, Marion. Just, just, just to finish, and if those set of competencies per staff level, let's say, could link somehow to the existing capacity building thing there is online or the postcard uh, related to that specific competencies. I think that would be very helpful. In, I mean, for practically guide a project manager on how to um, take his or her staff throughout the process of getting these specific competencies. I'm not sure if I'm making myself understand. No, but... I'm, uh, it's, it's clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I saw a message from the producer. Uh, I'm not sure what the message was saying. Anyway, Domenico, maybe your last word. It seems that uh, we don't have any more time. Well, I would like to build up on top of what said Lotte. Generally, I was looking more on the HR uh, department because they have in place some system for performance evaluation when the staff is not really well performing and so on. And this process is always 
lived by the employee, like, oh my God, they're looking a reason to fire me. While it can be really a way in order to put away the stigma and build with HR some system, some form, some way really for improving the skills, because the competency framework is not only for a good CP practitioner who wants to improve, but can, it should be also something for staff who are not really well performing, but they have the, uh, I, I would say, like the capacity and we, we have to improve this, uh, let's say, this attitude with technical things. So really to align with HR to provide tools for really support staff who may need of technical expertise and they just have this uh, attitude, let's say. <laughs> Yeah, you know? definitely. I think uh, one of the audience of the competency framework should definitely be also our HR staff. Katrina, mm -hmm. may I check with you how much time do I still have? Because uh, uh, So uh, I was going to say, um, we will run into the break. So if you do want to take a break, you're more than welcome to go. Um, however, um, if you would like to, to still answer a question or two, um, you're more than welcome. I do believe uh, Celestine had a question. Um, she had her hand up for next as well, if that's okay. Okay, so maybe let's hear Celestine. And and then for everybody else, you can put your answer uh, uh, through the Mentimeter link, um, if you prefer. No, I, I, think, uh, yes. I think that uh, I would like to, to ask if it's possible to have some kind of tip sheet for uh, the, the competence so that this can help uh, either the practitioner and also guide also human resource uh, staff. Yes, definitely. That was also one of our idea on the list. Thank you uh, for sharing that. Right, so maybe I give you 30 seconds to fill the Mentimeter. Um, and Katrina, sorry, I don't see Elena. Is she's not there? No, so I, so I gave them a little bit extra time. Um, so okay. I've just called them all back now. Okay, um, and perfect. then you guys can do a quick wrap up. Yes, and then exactly. Just over time, so. Exactly, <laughs> no, I don't want to uh, reduce your break. <laughs> maybe Katrina, would you mind putting back the slide while we wait for Elena to be back and for colleagues to fill in the Mentimeter? Thank you. Okay, so the Mentimeter has been put in the chat there for you guys. Um, which slide would you like? No, um, uh, this one? Next, no, no, next one, next one, next one, next one. <laughs> yeah, you can, oh. yeah, yeah, that one was good. Okay, perfect. No, the other one, sorry, you need to go back. Oh my gosh, it disappeared, one second. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. It just decided to start again. Uh, so which one, this one or this one? This one, yes. This one, okay. Perfect. This one is fine. Okay, so I saw uh, other colleagues uh, join us uh, um, a bit later. So you might have lost the discussion. Okay, Elena, you're back. Yes, sorry. So Elena, I think we need to wrap up. Uh, we have done our discussion on the competency framework. So I um, give you the floor to say something about the working group? Yeah, just swiftly before you go back to plenary. Is there a break? I'm not sure anymore. Yeah, Anita, so we need, to, we need to conclude quickly so they can take their break. Fantastic. So we just wanted to say, Anita and I, that we're really open like to receive requests of support, questions. There are no silly questions. Please write to us if you need help in finding capacity building resources, if you need to, do con to conduct capacity gaps analysis, if you are unsure on how best to deliver a training, uh, do you need more information on our capacity building initiatives? Just drop us an email. We're really only an email away. So we are not these monsters sitting God knows where. And if we can go to the next slide, uh, Katrina, just to thank everyone for the participation. This, um, this is the email you normally write to, learning at alliancepha.org. And um, yeah, we'll see you back in plenary, but I think you have 10 minutes break, if I'm correct, right? Now eight. Eight. <laughs> yes, now eight. so you just need to be back. You just need to be back on the 10 in the main plenary room for the next set of marketplace pitches. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Katrina, can I say Bye. that the last Mentimeters is uh, about the question and not for Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh.
Uh, that's updated now. Sorry about that. So if you use the link now, you would be able to put in your contact details. Apologies about that. I forgot I have to switch it. <laughs> I forgot to, like, to actually note down all the, all the details. Damn it. Okay, so the details are there if anyone wants to take it down. So I'm not sure why we had less time than other working groups. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Based on your because, schedule. Because we had just 30 minutes in the end, you know? Because they finished five minutes <laughs> late. Oh, and, then, and then, like, this group has, in general, 10 minutes late than the other. Mm. But, okay, I also don't. It's fine. I don't want to be the last last group of Friday. I think we only I think we only missed one Mentimeter. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. So, Katrina, yeah. then you will share all the results with us. Yes, of Thank course. Um, so, so and this evening when the conference is done, I actually sure. also work at a restaurant, so I have to run very quickly oh, right wow. after the conference is done. Um, but so later this okay. evening or tomorrow morning, I'll send you the results if that's okay. Yeah. That's fine. That's Ciao, perfect. Marke. Mark, <laughs> are you in this room? <laughs> You're at the plenary room, actually. Oh, ah, okay, sorry, oh. that's why. Oh, Edwin's we joining you again. He's going full circle. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you, though. Nice to see you, too. Yeah, so everyone that's here, um, please do uh, hang out. I'm going to stop sharing the screen there. Um, of course, it'd be great if everyone wants your details. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so for everyone in the plenary room, please just hold tight. Uh, we have about six minutes before we'll start um, on with the next marketplace. Thank you.